There's a story about an elderly man who's walking along beside an active stream. And he's jumping happily from rock to rock and he's singing and kind of dancing. And he's with a bunch of friends and they're amazed by what he's doing. And then all of a sudden he trips and he falls into this rushing stream and is moving towards this incredibly high waterfall and he's swept over the top of this waterfall and falls down below. So his friends run to get down below the waterfall to get to him and they pull him out of the water and he is fine and unheard and they say to him how can that be how did you survive and he said I accommodated myself to the water and I allowed myself to be shaped by the water and I plunged into the swirl and I came out of the swirl and that's how I survived Bruce Lee who you might know was a uh, really influential martial artist in this century. And he said this, be like water, making its way through cracks. Do not be assertive, but adjust to the object and you shall find a way around or through it. If nothing within you stays rigid, outward things will disclose themselves. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless like water. If you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. If you put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. If you put water into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Be water, my friend. Be like water. Have you ever lost yourself so completely in an activity that it, it seemed like you lost track of time? That you became so consumed in it, so involved in it, so invigorated by it, that it seems that the world went right on by you. And this is what... I like to call the flow. So I invite you just for a moment to, to close your eyes. We won't do a full on lengthy meditation, but let's just connect for a second. I invite you to close your eyes and imagine a time or think of a time when you were so completely in an activity that you were consumed by it. And time seemed to stop. The world seemed to pause and you were so captivated, enthralled, enthused. And just hold that thought for a moment. Hold that feeling of how that felt. Just to be in the flow. Hmm, how did that feel to you? To me, it's like, wow, it's in, engaging, it's powerful. This idea of flow is a concept proposed by the positive uh, psychologist, uh, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, Csikszentmihalyi, whose uh, name is always challenging. <laughs> I saw him in a YouTube video and he said, people always ask me to explain my name and he said, you know, it would take me my whole YouTube time to tell you my name. So uh, we'll just imagine that we can get pretty close to that. And um, he wrote the book called Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience. And this talk is inspired by that book. And I'm titling this talk, Getting Into the Flow. You know, I believe it's possible that we can live a good part of our lives in the flow. 
and I'm and I'm noticing myself as I'm working with this talk and even people I've talked to about this subject have spent more um, and set their intention on getting into the flow and I hope that happens to you as well and so I'm going to talk about what the flow is uh, give you some ideas of, of how you can get into the flow and then even challenge you at the end of this talk to find some time this week to practice being in the flow you know we hear so much about being in the moment and being present and and you know spending time meditating and I like to think that this practice that we're about of uh, being in the flow is an active meditation because we are participating in it and totally focused on it so what is meant by the flow state to me it's an optimum state in which we function at our highest capacity isn't that what you want that's what I want I want to live like that it's a it's a way of increasing our well-being and, and our productivity so much that we want to cultivate life and be a part of life and, life and participate life to the fullest and really engage in it. Um, Mihai Cheeks Mihai, uh, who is considered one of the founders of positive psychology, um, was one of the first researchers to really look into flow. And I think just for simplicity, I'll call him MC. That way we don't keep getting, trying to get ourselves wrapped around his name. But he writes, the best moments in our lives are not the passive, receptive, relaxing times. The best moments usually occur if a person's body and their mind is stretched to the limits in a voluntary effort to accomplish something that's difficult and worthwhile. MC became a happiness researcher uh, because of the adversity that he faced growing up. He was a prisoner during World War II and he witnessed the pain and the suffering of people around him during that time. And as a result, he developed this curiosity about happiness and contentment and wanted to figure out what can we do to experience more of that happiness and contentment in our lives. You know, science has long shown that f a flow state is a pillar of peak performance. And, and there's numerous benefits to us to be in this flow state, which include enhanced concentration, feelings of you know, personal control, of being in control, feelings of sincerity and honesty and integrity, as well as uh, increased productivity. And, and I think most important, it's an increased connection to our higher self. So it's about being connected with the universe, right? Being a, a part of the essence and the consciousness of spirit. And one of the most interesting outcomes that they're discovering, discovering as of recently, what flow does, it actually help, helps to make us happy to make us in, to help us to enjoy life to encourage us to live life to the fullest you know people f say that the flow state is like it, um, it's it's like being in the zone i know you've if you watch a an an, a, a, an athlete or an artist or a musician and you'll see that oftentimes they get into this place of flow where they're so connected to what they're doing that it's like everything is the world is spinning around them and they're just totally present to what is happening with them to me this is it's like being like water right being so adaptable and being so present and flowing with what is that we're being like water. So what makes 
human life meaningful? What makes it um, engaging? What makes it powerful? And I think there are three main uh, components of really what makes life the most uh, interesting and important um, and to make us m the most happy. And the first one, I think, is comfort, right? To, to have good food to eat, to, be, to live in a comfortable place, to have security. And the second element in that is engagement. You know, we want, the, I believe the human being wants to live a life where we are engaged in what we're doing. We are engaged in our life. You know, you might find that people that sit around and watch TV all day aren't really engaged in our life. So we want to be that so present to our life that we're engaged in it. And I think that means um, that we have to be challenged in some way. You know, maybe even uh, challenged about 10% beyond our comfort zone. That's where scientists are showing that we really find that excitement and we find that engagement is by, by doing tasks that are just outside of what's comfortable for us so that we can uh, experience um, some success or perhaps a lot of success and sometimes some failure, right? Because we, the, or some disappointment, which really uh, encourages us to step up to the plate again and to try a little harder the next time. And we do that by thoroughly being engaged. And the third piece of what, um, uh, what can lead to happiness is to have meaning. You know, to be of, involved in something that is larger than ourselves, to be involved in a cause, or to be involved in a, a group, or an abstract idea, or to be uh, doing some artwork, or some theater, or some um, something uh, social justice or following spiritual principles. I know that's what's always attracted me to this work is to be a part of, you know, spiritual principles that are changing my life and that I can share with other people and to encourage them to, to sh shape and experience uh, the fullness of life. Um, so um, I've been thinking, you know, what is, what is something that I really enjoy that I can uh, kind of talk about that, that brings me a lot of excitement, and that is snorkeling. I love to snorkel. I haven't done as much of it recently as I have, but there, I thoroughly enjoy the whole process, you know, the, the getting ready, to getting your gear ready and making sure it fits and you know, adjusting your mask and, and then going to where you're going to snorkel. And, and then I, I really valuable, value snorkeling because I love the exercise part of it, right? I, I, I know that it's good for my body and that it feels good to my mind. And um, sometimes I find that snorkeling is challenging. You. There's been a couple times when I have literally felt over my head um, when I was snorkeling, right? Where I felt this little bit of fear, right? Maybe it's because the current was taking me, or maybe because it was really windy, or, or maybe it was because my mask uh, kept fogging up, right? And I had to continuously clean my mask, or maybe it was being. Um, realizing, oh my gosh, you know, I'm in 50 feet of water. Uh, and so there's that little bit of um, adrenaline that flows as a result of being in a challenging position. And then there's the that engagement of, of the beauty, you know, of seeing a, a school of really beautiful fish and uh, or looking at the coral and just imagining how beautiful it is and knowing that it's a part of life. Um, you know, and sometimes snorkeling can uh, push me 
beyond my comfort zone. And there can be a point where I just want to get out of the water, right? I can realize I have a long ways to swim back and I'm feeling a little tired, I'm feeling a little cold. And there's sometimes I have to force myself to kind of hang in there and stick with it and, and, and kind of fight off the fear. You know, and I, I always walk away from snorkeling exuberated or exuberant. I don't know if exuberated is a word, but I like it. Feeling exuberated, yeah, and excited. And it's like, wow, that was fun. And I love telling the stories of the, you know, the fish that I saw or the, the uh, turtles that I saw and what they were doing and how they were bouncing off the rocks or how the, you know, the last time I went snorkeling, some fish came up and looked me right in the eye. And, and it was, it was interesting because it was at a point where I was kind of like, oh, I am, you know, I'm kind of not sure I want to be doing this. It doesn't feel safe. And I felt like this guy was coming up and talking to me and saying, hey man, if I can do it, you can do it. But it, you know, you, you walk away with these great stories of that I did of what I experienced when I was snorkeling. And then I, there's always this exuberance, right? When you get out of the ocean and feeling like, wow, I feel great. My body feels powerful. I feel connected to myself. So I'm going to give you eight things that you can do to get in, eight techniques that you can use to get into the flow. And I recognize that this is a lot of information, but I really believe that these are eight powerful tools that you can use to get uh, in the flow. And what I'm going to challenge you to do this week is to take these eight things or, or whatever of them work for you and um, practice them and try an activity that fits into the, uh, the way that I'm going to show them to you and give it a chance and see if you can get into the flow this week. And uh, these eight things will be in my walk your talk. And um, if you want me to send you the walk your talk, you can send me an email at uh, uh, blaint 2 at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to send it to you. I really want you to give this a try. So what is the first one? The first one, similar to uh, getting my fins ready and getting my equipment ready, is to get centered right to hold the intention for that what you're going to do to be in the flow and to maybe even cre create a ritual around it light a candle um, say a prayer say an affirmation uh, sit in the silence for a moment and contemplate what it is you're going to do but find some way to get centered and the second thing you can do is to choose an activity that you love Right, because um, especially when we're practicing this um, idea of getting in the flow, we want to do something that we really enjoy because it's easier to get in the flow when you do something that you are really fired up about that you love. So choose an activity that you love. And then the second or the third thing is choose something that has value to you right like the snorkeling to me has value to me because i i love i love to swim i love the feeling that it gives my body so choose a task that can have a a long-term value to me um, a goal perhaps or a commitment or a passion or something that uh, causes innovation to move through you or something that involves integrity and then the next thing you can do is choose something that's challenging, right? You don't want to, you know, it's difficult to get totally into the flow of something if it's too easy, right? If there's a little bit of a challenge to it, it engages us at a deeper level. So pick something that's challenging, not terrifically difficult, but is challenging to you. And then take a time Pick a time when you can be 
totally engaged, right? When there's fewer distractions, uh, you can put your cell phone away, <laughs> turn it off, and just commit yourself to that time. Make sure it's a time when you're not going to be hungry or, you know, but find a time when you can be totally um, engaged. And the next thing uh, demonstrated when I was snorkeling and there was a time when it's like I was cold and I was tired and I just wanted to get out of the water. Um, and, and it's interesting for me, oftentimes if, I, oftentimes, if I can avoid that desire to get the heck out of somewhere or stop something, that's just about the time that I have the best experience that's, you know, that's possible for that activity. So the, the message is, is to hang in there. When you first get those impulses of, oh, I'm ready to move on to something else. Oh, I'm tired of this. Allow yourself to hang in there, to be persistent. And because, you know, getting in the flow is an exercise, right? This is a, an exercise that we're creating for ourselves. And there has to be some stretching involved. Anytime, I found, anytime we do something that's new, it, it takes some determination. So when you get those little impulses to go on and do something else, right? Go check your phone, uh, go check the computer, whatever it is, just hang in there. And you can kind of say, okay, I'll get to that in a moment. But for right now, I'm going to be present to this moment of being in the flow. And the next thing is to have fun, to recognize that the reason that you're doing this, the reason that you're being in the flow really is to enhance your enjoyment of life. And so give yourself the freedom to have a good time. And even you might even say, hey, I, you know, I, I want to be having a good time right now because we can be bombarded or I can say I can be bombarded with a whole bunch of thoughts that try and pull me out of the moment. Right. And again, this is an exercise in being in the flow in being like water and just to pay attention and stay in that flow and have a good time intentionally have a good time. And the last thing that we can do is to celebrate our success, right? Tell people, you know, like I like to do, we all like to do, right? When we snorkel, we like to share the fish that we saw, the turtles we saw, the sharks we saw. And so celebrate that. Tell people of your success and how it felt. Tell yourself, wow, what a great job I did. I hung in there, I had fun and I had a good time. So um, enjoy the process. It is a process, it is a stretch, but it isn't life about being present. Isn't life about being like water, to be so adaptable and so present that we can, we can flow like the water does and be present to whatever is happening right now in this moment. Lao Tzu wrote, those who flow as life know that they need no other force. I like Alan Watts too. He always has a, a bit of humor and truth in what he does and what he says. And, and he said this, this is a secret to life, to be completely engaged with what you are doing in the right here and now. And instead of calling it work, realize it's play. And he goes on to say, to have faith is to trust yourself to the water. I love that. When you swim, don't grab hold of the water because if you do, you will sink and drown. Instead, Relax and float. Wow. Rumi wrote, flow down and down in always widening rings. And to me, this is, this is about life, right? To, to be able to flow with life, 
with whatever is happening, to be present to the moment, to be present to what is happening in this moment to these ever-expanding rings of life, these ever-expanding experiences that life presents us with, to be open, to flow as water to these ever-expanding experiences in the growth of consciousness. And isn't that what everything is? To be able to be more present, to be able to be more loving, to be able to enjoy this moment and to play wherever we are and realize that we are here to experience life and to be a part of it, to be like water. I am like water. I am in the flow. Affirm that with me. I am like water. I am in the flow. I invite you to close your eyes and let's join together for a meditation. Taking a deep breath, breathing into this moment. And seeing this moment right now as being in the flow. Just letting go of um, all of these many words that we just shared. And just to be in the feeling of the flow. To be like water. In the flow. Breathing in and breathing out in the flow of life. And imagine how that would be if you could be in the flow with all of your life. To adjust, to be like water, to adjust uh, to the cup to the bottle, to the teapot. To be like the, the man who fell into the stream, to become one with the stream, one with the flow. Breathing in and breathing out. And let's take just a moment to spend a short time in the silence. Breathing in, breathing out. To be like water. And now begin to bring your awareness back to this moment. In the flow in the ease, in the peace. And I invite you to open your eyes when you're ready. Hmm. Blessings to you. Thank you for being here um, today. And I invite you now to uh, prepare your uh, donations, your love offering, um, your contributions to Unity Church of Maui. 
um, and to um, prepare them and to embrace them with love, whether you um, physically have your check in your hand or you're, you're holding the um, amount that you'd like to share with Unity Church of Maui. Um, we hope that the, the things that we share and that we teach are um, helping you to be more in the flow of life. And we thank you in advance for all that you give. Um, it is your gifts that help us um, to do what we do. So as you hold your gift, let's affirm and pray together our affirmation of prosperity, which begins through a grateful giving heart. My mind and life overflow with the abundance of God's all-providing, infinite supply. And so it is. Namaste. And mahalo. Hmm. So you might say, well, I'd love to give to Unity, but how do I do so? Uh, well, you can send a check to Unity Church of Maui at 483 South High Street in Wailuku. Or you can go to our webpage, uh, unityonmaui.org, and click on our Donate button and make a donation there. It's a safe uh, way to donate. And we thank you again for your gifts. And God bless you. So I've got just a couple announcements today. Um, I've had some <laughs> been in the flow and had some fun uh, thinking about what to talk about next week. And... Um, I decided to talk, uh, um, to call my talk uh, Sacred Clowns. And uh, it's kind of interesting where this phrase come from, comes from. You know, in the Native American tradition, in many tribes, they had what was called a sacred clown. And a sacred clown is a, a person whose role it was uh, to... <laughs> to cause uh, intentionally chaos in the tribe. And that sacred clown might dress up with all, all of their clothes on a really hot day, you know, and stand in the midst of the tribe and tell everybody how cold it was. Or this, tri this uh, sacred clown might follow people around and, and repeat everything that they say, right? Kind of uh, getting them to notice what's up for them. And the sacred clown's role really was to help uh, with the, as in today's terms, we would say with advancing our consciousness. So next week we're going to talk about um, what a sacred clown is and how can we rise up to the place where we have compassion for our sacred clowns and we also are able to gleam the teaching that they're here to show us. So that'll be lots of fun. And we'll be doing that next week, right at this same time. Um, and uh, 11 o'clock today, we have our weekly Zoom meeting. And I'd like to invite you to join us for that. Um, you can find the links to this meeting today by uh, going to our newsletter, clicking on the link in our newsletter. Um, or going to our website and clicking on the active link um, in our, on our website. And um, you can also join us if you need a midweek connection on Wednesday at noon Hawaii time uh, for our reading of the Daily Word and meditation. Great, time, great way and time to get connected with your Unity community. And if you enjoy our presentations, you can always go to our YouTube page, Unity on Maui YouTube, and we've got a whole abundance of uh, talks and music that you can tune into there uh, to give you a little spiritual fix anytime that you desire. And uh, let's see, I think that about wraps it up for today. So I hope to see you at 11 o'clock today on um, on Zoom for our Zoom call. And um, so why don't we end this time together today. Thank you again for being here. I love you. I bless you. I appreciate you. 
Uh, and let's uh, end our time together by praying together the prayer for protection, which begins, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us wherever we are, God is. God bless you, my friend. Uh, see you soon. Mahalo and aloha. Where I live, there are rain.